Mary Godwin and I'm the director of Bob and Keep Army Museum. We put together a great new exhibition all about the Territorial Army and volunteering in the military. There's a long tradition of volunteering in the Army and the museum's collection has some amazing artefacts related to volunteering in the 18th, 19th and 20th century. In World War I, the territorial force, as it was known then, was a really important part of manpower. People serving in the territorial force did not have to serve overseas, but many of them did and they played a really important part in the war. They gained a special medal for doing this. One of the exhibits in the exhibition from the museum's collection is this Distinguished Conduct Medal. It's the medal on the left of this group and these medals were all awarded to W.E. White who had been a territorial soldier before the outbreak of World War I, serving with the 4th Battalion DCLI. Because of his brave actions in March 1918, he was awarded this medal for conspicuous gallantry and devotion to duty. He saved soldiers who had been in a collapsed trench and then he returned to man his post with the rest of his company. The 5th Battalion landed in Normandy on the 23rd of June 1944 and they were seen heavily involved in the fight for Hill 112, which was a strategic objective for control of the surrounding area. Over the following weeks, the hill changed hands several times in fierce fighting until finally it was taken by the British on the 4th of August. Hill 112 later became known as Cornwall Hill in memory of those many Cornish men, formerly territorials, who died fighting to seize it. This map from 1944 was carried by Lieutenant Colonel Taylor of the 5th Battalion DCLI in Normandy and it actually still carries traces of Normandy mud. It shows a defensive area of the 5th Battalion around Hill 112, known as Cornwall Hill, after the ending of the brutal battle in 1944. The defensive fire plans are marked in blue on the map. Territorial Army drill halls in towns all across Cornwall if you know what to look for. Hello, my name is Staff Sergeant Joe Chapman and I'm currently the recruiter up the road from this museum at 232 Port and Maritime Squadron. I recruit for the whole of Cornwall. The Army Reserves support the regular Army in many different situations, here in the UK and abroad. We can go in and do the jobs that the regular army need us to do in whatever situation they want us. The training that we receive as army reservists are second to none. We are at the same level and the same par as a regular soldier. So I joined the army reserves uh, instead of the regulars because I wanted uh, flexibility in my lifestyle. Um, whereas in the regular army you're required 24-7, uh, the reserves was a lot more flexible for myself. So the things we go up to, uh, you're required to attend a drill night, uh, usually on a Wednesday evening for us at 232 Port Squadron. Um, but you also do a weekend as well, and you're also required to do a two-week annual camp uh, in various locations, uh, some being Cyprus. The things I've been up to, uh, I do a lot of sport and adventurous training, so I've been skiing in Norway, Austria and Germany. Uh, mountain biking in Germany and France, and water sports in Cyprus and the Canary Islands. Hi, I am Lance Cobble Down. I'm here to talk about how the Army Reserve has helped me with my day job. I am a port operator from 232 Port and Maritime in Bodmin, and I'm a firefighter in my civilian job. The Army Reserves helped me gain my confidence and gave me the skills required to apply for my gene job as a firefighter, from doing ship firefighting, from dealing with wildfires in Cyprus when I was mobilised for six months. If you want to know what trades you can do within the Royal Logistic Corps, 
and the Army Reserves, please give us a call.